And there you are. Look at you. Hello. Hi. <laughs> You like my martini glasses? I absolutely love oh, yeah. your martini glasses. Those are very, very nice. I had a, I had a big night last night. <laughs> I'm, joking, I'm joking. I'm joking. I just thought I'd make you laugh. Hi. Those Hello. are awesome. Very good to see you. Thank you. Okay. Great to see you too. Okay, we're we'll gonna start here in a second. Uh, just real quick, this is Billy. You've ne- you haven't met Billy before, but he's my Hello. co-host of the podcast. Hi, Billy. Hi, thank you for having me on your show. Oh, thank you for coming in. It's very, very exciting. I was almost thinking, uh, just <clears throat> doing my research and reading past interviews and stuff. I'm wondering if we're going to have to do a two-parter here because yeah, you've got yeah. lots of stuff to talk about. Uh, four, <laughs> four-parter, but who's... <laughs> <laughs> I'm, kidding, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. Okay, and what we'll do is I'll get started. I'll introduce it, Scary Dad Podcast, special episode with the lovely Lorene Landon, of course. Uh, who's about to make an appearance coming up, blah, blah, blah. And then we'll start at that point. Okay. All righty. Okay. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this very special edition of the Scary Dad podcast. We, are, uh, we have a very special guest today. We are being joined by the lovely and so very sweet Lorene Landon, who uh, will be uh, making an appearance uh, in June at the uh, Houston Horror Film Festival coming up June 25th through the 27th. And we're very excited and welcome, Lorene. How are you doing today? Thank you. I am so, so, so excited to be coming to uh, Houston. And uh, I was in Austin about uh, four years ago, 2017, for the, uh, um, oh, what was it called? The um, um Al- alamo the alamo was it the alamo draft, draft house, house baby yeah, yes. yeah yeah yes. yeah yeah yes that was in austin i went there with larry cohen my my, my dear friend who sadly passed away a few years ago okay. um but had a wonderful wonderful time there lovely lovely people that is how great far, to hear how far are you from austin uh from austin what is it billy about it's a it's about 150 miles so like Two and a half, three hour drive. Oh, okay. So it's not, you know, we get to Austin to to hang out and you know, it's it's a good place. It's a lot of fun. Austin's a great city, some very beautiful sights to see out there and uh, some really good people too. Tell me about those owls that you sent me. Okay, you- so <laughs> so uh, I work for the Houston Arboretum and Nature Center, which is a uh, nature conservatory. It's a nonprofit out here in Houston, and okay. uh, we do uh, we do events and everything. And that on Thursday night, we had a uh, an owl event where some rescued owls from the SPCA were brought in, and some people got to have a little bit of a uh, little one on one time with the uh, the rescued owls. That's why there's one of them. If you look at the picture, he's kind of He's got one eye closed, like he's side eyeing me. Yeah, yes, yes. He actually has an injured eye. He can't open his eye all the way. So uh, normally, normally they release the owls they rescue once they are uh, they can uh, take care of themselves. But those right. two particular owls, they uh, because of injuries to their eyes, they really can't function in the wild themselves. So it was a great experience. It was really really cool. Very kind of you to do that. Well, I love working for the yeah. arboretum. And uh, I- can you uh, pet the owls? Uh, no, no, that's one thing they don't allow. No, no, no. Wait, can they pet you? Oh, I'm sure they can. <laughs> I'm sure they can do more. Did you see the talons on those things? I mean, they're. I sure did. Those were huge. Oh, well, very excited to have you coming down to Houston. Is this your first trip to Houston, or have you been out here before? Um, first trip to Houston, yes. All right, uh, excellent. Like I said, I've only been to Austin, and. I was somewhere in Texas when I did Yellow Hair in the Fortress of Gold. Okay. Uh, I went there to train. I forget where it was exactly. Um, and, th- and then we went to uh, Spain to film the movie. Okay. Uh, yeah, that was a few years ago, before your parents were born, of course. <laughs> <laughs> you might be surprised at that. Uh, okay. So I want to start off with a lot of people, a lot of horror fans know you from Maniac Cop, of course. But uh, yeah. what I wanted to ask you about is I know the uh, the first kind of minor role in a horror film you had was in The Stuff that was directed by the the awesome Larry Cohen, who you mentioned earlier. And your next actual horror film role was in It's Alive 3, which is a yeah. franchise that uh, like I talk on the podcast all the time. I watched a lot of movies probably when I was too young to watch them. And the It's Alive series was one that I uh, used to I actually rewatched the first one a couple of nights ago. But uh, mm-hmm. How did you transition over from the stuff? Because you had never done a horror movie before, before the stuff. 
Uh, no, I, did... I did. I, no, you uh, did. I did. Um, I did a movie uh, when I first met Larry, Full Moon High. Okay. Uh, that was my first uh, horror film. That's when I was like 19 years old. Okay. And uh, it's a funny story because when uh, my agent, Beverly Heck, called me to go out for the audition, um, I met with Larry and he was incredibly funny. And I was so in awe of him and so scared of him because he was he was just so handsome and so impossibly funny. And uh, what he did was fire the lead girl. Uh, <laughs> when, when I showed up, he he took me aside and he said, we don't like the lead girl. She's awful, dreadful. And uh, I want to give you the lead role. And I said, no, w- w- what? No. <laughs> no, I, I can't do that. And he said, what do you mean? What's wrong with you? And I said, uh, um, I, I can't do, he said, I'm starring you in the movie. Okay. And I said, no, I, I, I can't, I have to go. I, I have an audition I have to go to, which I didn't <laughs> have an audition at all. And Beverly Heck, my agent at the time called me when I got home and uh, blasted me. I didn't pick up the phone for three days because I knew I was in trouble. But then Larry wrote a part for me in the film anyway, where I'm the only one that sees the werewolf in the movie. So um, I could have played the lead. Joanne Neal got the uh, the part. Um, but yeah, that was the first horror film that I ever did. That's a crazy story, too. I mean, yeah, it is pretty crazy. It's just like, here's... Ner- here's here's a lead role i mean i, I would have probably reacted the same way you're just kind of like oh well <laughs> that's a- yeah i don't think I had, I, I had only done a basketball movie before that um and it, it was just you know a really nothing little movie and and to meet larry cohen because when i grew up my father and i loved um um all his movies it's alive and and my dad always wanted to meet larry cohen and thank God, um, uh, Larry saw my dad many, many times before my dad passed away. And that was really the highlight of my dad's life was to meet Larry Cohen. Oh, that's uh, awesome. he, he was so kind, so good to my dad. Now, were you a horror movie fan beforehand? You, you said that you and your dad enjoyed It's Alive. Did you enjoy uh, it? Yeah, I loved all the Frankenstein movies growing up. Um, um, uh, the Dracula movies. Um uh and anything really that involves suspense really not so much horror horror yes but but um I, i'm of the belief that uh watching movies that are suspenseful you know that have uh, a lot of issues that you have to overcome and those are the kind of movies that i love and those were larry's favorite movies by the way uh, he was known as a horror director, but Larry, you know, he did Cellular, which I wrote. I wrote the treatment for the movie Cellular, which was number two at the back box office. And he wrote Phone Booth and Best Seller and so many other movies. Uh, he wasn't just he wasn't just a horror director. You know, he he uh, he covered the full spectrum of the uh, industry. So um, I'm sorry, I keep going off on tangents, don't I? Oh, no, That's don't awesome. worry about that at all. And what I love is just uh, you speaking of the this suspense aspect of horror movies. One thing I love about suspense is it's an even better way to immerse you, immerse yourself into the experience. Because I mean, uh, you know, when you have a suspenseful movie, your heartbeat accelerates oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. with the characters. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Well- it's all psychological, eh? It's uh, that's why I don't like horror movies that show the creature. Like Larry never showed the really showed the creature in It's Alive, the first one, and he did that intentionally because he had told me uh, after I'd met him, of course, years after I had finally met him, that um, the reason he uh, only showed little pieces of of the It's Alive baby was. He wanted to uh, leave uh, what is in the imagination, which is more terrifying, obviously, than mm-hmm. than, what it, than seeing a creature, right? You know, a stupid creature, and then oh, I'm not scared anymore. But when you have jump scares, and when um, you, you know, there's all this suspense going on, and um, yeah, that's that's what those are the kind of movies that I really, really love. I totally about- agree. I think it's funny you you get these. And, and Scott and I are not this way. Scott and I just kind of like the whole spectrum. So everything from, you know, A-list all the way to, you know, the independent, you know, 
two guys yeah. in the backyard with with the with the camera which he's he's, yeah. made, he's made a movie um <laughs> but um you know it's like the, but you're right the suspense you know the jump scare and you have these you know people that are like film uh you know they're like aficionados that'll say che- jump scares are cheap and i'm like well that's no that's fun like yeah. if, if you can you know you get you know if you can get me a couple of times while while I'm watching a movie, I I enjoy that. You know, it's you go for the thrill. It's the popcorn effect. You know, you're not going. It's a roller coaster. coaster. It's like a roller coaster. We yeah. said it uh-huh. at the same time. How funny! So you know, I love that kind of stuff. And um, so no, I, I totally too. agree. That's awesome. Now, one more thing I want to touch on before we move on to Maniac Cop because we're definitely going to talk about that is uh, sure. uh all the marbles. Aww. How much did you learn from Peter Falk? Because he's just, you know, growing up, Peter Falk was kind of a mainstay. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I told my cousin the other day, I said, dude, if you remember those days when we used to watch all the Marvels and, you know, I'd be just sitting there just enthralled by the California dolls. And I told him, I said, if you would have told me back then that one day I'd be on a Zoom call with Laureen Landon, I would have told you you were crazy. That movie, and that movie was just a mainstay in the house back in the day. And, uh, I yeah. loved it. And, and you know, I, was, I grew up a wrestling fan, South Louisiana, Mid-South Wrestling. And uh, I mean, Glow Wrestling is pretty much all the marbles. I mean, it, uh, it, it's- Oh, it, it is. It, well, Matt Simber is a dear friend of mine and, and um, he created uh, Glow because of me, because of all the marbles. Um, and he wanted me to be in the show back when they did it but because i was with i sam jack gelardi huh, um they said no 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 you're not doing that uh wrestling stuff anymore you know you got to segue into something else but we did sign to do a um uh a sequel to all the marvels to be shot in japan but unfortunately the movie was not a big hit here in the united states it was a big hit in europe and it was the n- number one movie in Egypt, <laughs> Egypt of all places, for a long, long time. And so when I went to the uh, Cannes Film Festival, I uh, went there twice, eh? And 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 everybody was just, uh, they were just like, oh God, I love, love, love all the marbles. And I went there for uh, I the Jury, opposite mm-hmm. Armando Sante and. Uh, for Hundra, my uh, film Hundra. That's why I actually went went to uh, the Cannes Film Festival the first time, and we wrote on the croissant, croissant, whatever they're called, the croissant. No, I I I, I was riding um, um, with the six horses, right? And, mm-hmm. and we had like a thousand photographers surrounding us, and I, I was I was in shock. We I was in the stagecoach. I don't know if you ever saw. Yellow hair in the fortress of gold. Yes. Yeah. Oh, you poor thing. That was a crime. <laughs> <laughs> now you speaking of Hundra. You just mentioned Hundra. Uh, I know they're about to do a Blu-ray release of Hundra. Are you prepared for the sudden surge in popularity that you're about to get again from a different set of fans for Hundra? Um, you know, I was approached to do the uh, to do um, a Q and A thing uh, because I did one initially. But the guy that was calling me, he, he's an obsessed fan. His name is Douglas Dunning. And I don't know if you've heard of him, but he's been obsessed with me and told, telling people that we are married or engaged for 30 years. And so he's been the middleman and threatening me. And I, I'll send you some uh, audio that you will not believe because uh, I save all his messages in case I ever get killed because he's nuts. So. Oh, damn. Yeah, he's a lunatic and a stalker. Although some, I guess you should marry a stalker, right? Because stalkers don't cheat on you. That's right. They'll be faithful. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so. I'm excited about about 100 uh, coming out in the Blu-ray. Yeah. Good deal. Because I'm I'm sure, I've seen it, of course, but I'm sure there's a lot of people, uh, especially now that you're, you know, how welcoming have horror fans been to you since the the, the sudden surge in popularity of horror conventions and signings and everything? Did you, ever, did you ever expect to one day be considered a scream queen? No, I don't think I've ever been called a scream queen. Right? Well, I've, I've been keeping up with kind of your, your independent work as of late. And slowly but surely, you're probably starting to become uh, lean towards that, uh, that yeah. title. Definitely. 
but yeah, but I, I don't know. I mean, I did the movie Sky, um, mm-hmm. which was a, a big hit, and I, I got a fabulous review from the Hollywood Reporter. My part was huge, but um, Diane Kruger had me cut out of it because she was the uh, one of the producers, and <clears throat> pardon me, she kept telling me when we were filming in Vegas that uh, I was stealing the scenes from her, and yeah, and oh, no. I, said, I don't like you stealing the scenes from me. I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't like this. Um, she said, "You make me have to bring my game up." Whatever. <laughs> that so, so um, I did that. I got a great review from the Hollywood Reporter, and you know, I, like I said, I've done I've done all kinds of films. Uh, oh yes, yes, comedy, yeah. drama, sci-fi. Um, I like to pride myself on that and not be pigeonholed in into playing uh, just uh, ho- you know doing horror movies, uh, which are fun, which are really fun to do. Um, but I don't know. I, I like to challenge myself. I get scripts all the time, and I turn most of them down because I, I don't think I, I feel I don't feel I can do anything with the character. I try mm-hmm. to make my characters three dimensional. Um, I I, I uh, a lot of the scripts that are sent to me, I just say, you know, no, unless I can improvise. Cause I love to improvise. I improvised everything in sky. And like I said, my part was huge. And when I, uh, when I went to um, Toronto for the Toronto international film festival, I got a standing ovation. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I was stunned uh, because I had just watched the movie and I, I was crying because where were all my scenes? Diane cut out all my scenes, you know, all the scenes where I was roller skating and um, roller skating, teaching her how to skate and in a bar where uh, I was a waitress. And so that, that, uh, you know, that's one of the, one of the problems with uh, not having creative control uh, is that you never see the end product. eh? You never Uh see what um, they're going to leave in or cut out. And I think some, honestly, I think some of my, the best work that I've ever done was uh, left on the cutting room floor. So, you know, that's just one of the problems with uh, uh, being an actor and not a producer. I don't know how to be a producer. I write screenplays. I I wrote uh, a lot of movies with Larry Cohen. I wrote Dog Pen, Jailhouse Dog. um, And we we wrote um, uh, a lot of films together. So, um, you know, I, I love writing just as much as I do acting. So um, I don't know. I just I enjoy the business. What can I say? It's awesome. That it is awesome to hear. Definitely. Uh, th- did you, as a child, did you aspire to eventually get into the business, or in high school growing up, did you start thinking, you know, maybe I want to go ahead and get into show business? Well, the funny thing is. Uh, I used to watch all the old, um, great old movies, Weathering Heights and anything with James Cagney, anything with Marlon Brando. um, And and I watched them with my father. And the funny thing was my father, he would be in the kitchen and I would be in the living room with a TV guide in front of me. And I would say, Daddy, is this movie any good? Random Harvest or Weathering Heights. And not only did my father know Douglas Coughlin. Um, not only did my father know the name of the movies, uh, who was in the movies, but he also knew what year they were made. So um, I w- always wondered what it would be like to be on the other side of the camera. Um, and that's really what precipitated my desire to be in the film business was my dad, was my father because of his love, love for movies. And we always watched movies together. When he was here in L.A., most of the time he was in Canada because um, him and my mom were fighting all the time, you know, like cats and dogs. So uh, he'd, he'd be away for years at a time. And, and, but he'd always come back. And I know I, 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 got, I wanted to be a, an actress, I think, when I was probably um, 12, 10, 12 years old. Wow. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I also had another reason to be in the in the film industry, and that was 
I wanted people to like me. I was very, very, very insecure growing up uh, because my parents were battling all the time. Eh? And so um, I wanted, I was scared. I was always scared because uh, the kids in school knew, knew my mom and dad were fighting and the cops were, were at our house every single week. And so uh, I wanted to be liked. Uh, that's another reason that I got into the film industry is that I wanted people to recognize me and you know, it was for the wrong reasons, but um, I, I did have the passion, uh, most definitely. Um, and for a while, I had the perseverance because I, I believe uh, that those are the two most important qualities to make it in this industry. You have to have the passion because everybody in town is is an actor, right? Or a waiter wanting to be an actor. And I always, <laughs> say, I always say, going to school? Are you going to school? No, I'm an actor. But aren't you going to school? No, I don't have to. I'm an actor. So I think you need, uh, there's two very important um, components to making it in the industry. Uh, and that is uh, uh, obviously the passion and, uh, and then perseverance. You have to have that per- perseverance, you know, and because so many people um, give up and they don't have the perseverance, you know, so. I went to a lot of acting schools, uh, Ivana Chubik, uh, Stanley Myron Handelman, so uh, so many acting schools when I was younger. And I'm really glad that I did um, because, you know, you, when, when you go to classes, and I studied with Roy London for a long time, who was a brilliant, brilliant uh, acting coach. He was a premier acting coach here in Los Angeles. And then he passed away and then Ivana took over the class so because Roy passed away, I went back and I studied, I stayed with Ivana for a while. So people need to go to school, acting school. You need to go to school. You can't just say I'm an actor, you know. You got to learn the craft. Yeah. Sure. Really? Yes. <laughs> my son is actually, my son is, so, go ahead. Are you an actor? I am not, but I am a writer. So oh, you are. Yeah. So I'm constantly, you know. You say the perseverance. So you you write stuff and you Mm -hmm. write more stuff and you know and like you say, you know, it's like you ask somebody or you know, you a lot of a lot of the world's online, especially with with last year with twenty twenty COVID, you know, so a lot of the people and they'll be like, I wrote a story. Now what? Like where's my rich where, where's my money? And and you gotta be like, Well, no, that's not how this works. You gotta write a story like every day. Yes. And, <laughs> like, yes. You know, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta fill the words, and you gotta read a lot, and you gotta work all the time because, yeah, you can't just call yourself a writer because you, you know, jotted what down a few. Right. right. Um, I've you're... actually written quite a few. I've got, uh, I've got two self-published uh, books that I've written. Uh, oh wow! I've, got, I've gotten um, several. I don't know if you've ever heard of the uh, No Sleep podcast. It's an audio drama podcast it's one of the larger audio uh it's 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 a audio drama so it's kind of like the old radio shows so they do oh, it's like yeah. dramatized so they have oh, voice definitely. actors and music and sound effects um so i've had actually several stories on that um a few narrations on youtube you know so constantly just just between running the the the, the, the podcast here and the uh the convention scene and then writing the books you know kind of all you know just kind of all in on the on the drama and the horror suspense side of things and um that's you know i guess little segue because we were mentioning Ma- maniac cop so i watched maniac cop last night and it's been a long time but one of the things that struck me as you know we we in this horror convention with a lot of the actors that we meet that have come in and sat down and to do autographs and signings and stuff a lot of them this movie you know this movie that movie whatever it was a job for them many many years ago and then it kind of just you know it went to the video shelves and it just right. kind of it was just kind of existed and then in the last few years this has been kind of this renaissance this kind of nostalgia um re reawakening of all of this stuff so did you did you think that a movie like maniac cop in part two would would just suddenly just pop up again and become a thing 
Why no, are we but, talking about it this much later? I'll tell you, I get recognized, believe it or not, I get recognized still everywhere I go from all the marbles, airplane two, uh, maniac cop. And I can't believe people uh, remember or recognize me, uh, but um, people recognize me everywhere I go. And a lot of times they ask for my autograph and I say, of course, but uh, yes, there's been a huge re resurgence in the, uh, in the horror uh, industry. And I, and I don't know if that's because it, is it cheaper to make horror films? Is that it? Well, I think because Scott and I have done this podcast for coming up on five years. And oh, wow, that's a long we, time. We've had, we've had, you know, conversations with lots of people, both on the show and off the show. And everybody has an opinion about what's what. And I think right. for, for Scott and I specifically, um, there was just this kind of magical time, which would have been like the mid to late 80s, where, you know, you, it was video store culture. And, you know, you're setting up for a Friday night to go hang out with your friends. And, you know, you're going to rent a couple of movies and you want to show that you're cool. So you, you rent a scary one. <laughs> and, you know, and then now that we're now that we're older and parents of our you know, that, like that video store culture isn't there. It's kind of a missing part of Americana. Yeah. It's only just kind of there for a minute. It's sad. It's and really scrolling, sad. scrolling Netflix isn't the same. Scrolling yeah. streaming, you know, it's just not not the same thing. No, it's and not. So, so I don't know that it's necessarily, and I could be, I, I, I won't speak for Scott because everybody's got their own reasons, but I don't know that it's necessarily like, woo, you know, let's let's see some blood and guts. It's more like, let's take me back to that Friday night, you know, sleep over with my friends and kind of just relive yeah. some of those old moments and you know and we say because we go not only do we run the convention but we we go to the other ones and I say it's always this weird this weird thing at the horror convention is more than the other pop culture convention weird how weird how because you've got all of this violent and bloody imagery on the walls and on the tables <laughs> and then everybody's walking around with little heart bubbles because they're just so happy to be in, oh, that, yeah. in that in that game so um you know and, and so we're we're just big fans right so we're just fans of the genre we're fans of the movies we're fun, fans of the special effects and the directors and and the the writers and all the people you know so it's it for us it's it's very holistic it's not so much like um like i said it's not just like an attraction to blood and guts it's kind of just an attraction to the whole the whole world of it so when we get to talk to somebody like you that's been on both sides of the camera you know as either a writer producer or whatever and it's like okay what is what is it like to just be like living your life doing your thing going to work coming home and then one day you get a call that's like hey somebody wants you to to, to show up and represent a movie that you made in 1988 <laughs> you know what I mean? like, yeah that's 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 happened recently actually <laughs> what's your favorite horror movie billy um, my all-time favorite horror movie is going to probably be Jaws because oh, it's, you know, um, but then of course, you know, the original Halloween is, and then it's pretty much everything John Carpenter made. So Halloween, the thing, um, Halloween and the thing kind of, Oh, the original <laughs> thing was the best. That's, that's my favorite, believe it or not. That's my favorite horror movie of all time. Um, with James Arness playing the thing and, it probably isn't scary to people now, you know, today. But when I saw that movie, The Thing, I was terrified uh, because, like, like I said earlier, you don't you don't really see the creature, right? Until kind of like the end, and maybe it's hokey if you see it now. But when I saw it, um, I think it was better than the remake. And I know you probably think I'm crazy, but <laughs> I just think the original. Uh, when was that done? Nineteen. 54 I, I don't know I, I don't believe know. I believe it was 64 65 it was right around that time period though how do you know that Scott? because I, I, I research movies a lot that's part, part of the thing I do is I get content for our Facebook pages so did I go like, through did you, like it? did you like the original thing I, I, I like the original but I got to be honest with you the 1982 the thing is my favorite that uh Kurt Russell, with Kurt Russell. yes yeah yeah, yeah. yeah it, it's it, to me honestly it, you know it, people ask me what my favorite horror movies is it's you no know, there's a difference between you know what I consider the best horror movie and yes. the one I'm most endeared to because the one yeah. I'm most endeared to is probably a movie that people would say why would you like that movie but <clears throat> I rented basket case so many times when I was a kid 
that basket case. I was obsessed with that movie basket case. Uh, uh, Kevin scary? Van Hanterick. He uh, it was it scary? No, it was just it was just a goofy, campy horror movie that I remember as a kid going to the video store, Wagabag Video Store in New Iberia, Louisiana, riding my bike there and seeing the cover art for Basket Case and thinking, I've got to watch this movie. Because my thing was, I would pick movies by how cool the cover art looked when I was a kid. And, I, love uh, I love your accent. <laughs> it comes out more when I drink. Trust me, you'll see horrible. it uh, when you come down. <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so uh, Basket Case, I've run it so many times. And honestly, that movie is probably one that I've watched more than any other horror movie. And that one's. What's, the- What's it about? It's about a young man uh, played by Kevin Van Hanterick that uh, he walks around with a basket and he. He goes into a hotel. The movie opens up. He goes into a hotel. He has his basket. It has a lock on it. And what people okay. don't realize is that basket holds his former Siamese twin that was cut from Ooh. his body and was supposed to have been killed by his evil parents and doctor. But his right, aunt, right, right. his aunt saved them and raised them. And the, the, the synopsis of the movie is they're out to get revenge on the people that wanted to kill his brother Bilal. So uh, oh, okay. it's, it's, it's interesting. It's, it's all practical effects, a lot of stop motion stuff. It, uh, just, but as a kid, I watched that movie so many times But was over. it scary? But was it scary? No, no. To me, horror <laughs> doesn't have to be scary. It, uh, yeah. it, 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 it's okay. always fun if it is scary. Poltergeist still has a jump scare that gets me every time oh, that yeah. I see it. Uh, yeah. It's a great movie. But the thing, I've always felt as though the thing was the closest thing to a perfect movie I have ever seen. You mean the one with Kurt Russell? Yes, 1982 is the thing. Yes, yeah, yeah. It's a it's a great film. What, what, what are your? I know you you love the original thing. What are some of your favorite horror movies? Oh gee, um, Black Christmas. Loved Black Christmas. Uh, I saw that on a double bill with now, my the dad. Ni- the 1974 my- one, right? The original. The original one, Black yes. Christmas. Yeah. yeah, with the eyeball. Yes. Come out the door. Oh, oh my God, that was so scary. That's I don't another- know. If, I don't know if you've ever spoken to uh, to Troy Escamilla, who is the uh, the actual original founder of the Houston Horror Film Festival. But that is his yeah. favorite horror movie of all time. That movie has inspired him. He's he's a filmmaker. He's a he's a director, and he always tells me that that's the movie that inspired him to become a filmmaker. Oh man, that uh, body up there in the rocking chair up st- upstairs with the plastic around. Oh my gosh, was that scary? I couldn't <laughs> wait to see it again. <laughs> well, that is awesome. Well, look, we're, we're starting to get short on time for this first uh, podcast okay. that we're doing. Hopefully, we'll be able to visit with you again soon. But if not oh, soon, sure. definitely when you come down to Houston, which we can't wait for. But uh, oh, thank you. Me too. Thank you so much for joining us. Is there a message you want to send out to the folks coming out to the film oh, festival? Please. Please, everybody come to the Houston Horror Film Festival. I want to thank Tony Rodriguez so much. I absolutely adore him. Tony is the son I never had. That is awesome. I mean, the son, S-U-N, I never had. Tony is great. He is, he's just remarkable. And he's so uh, compassionate and so kind. And he rescues I, I rescue two pit bulls. I, okay. I, I rescue pit bulls. So um, anyway, um, yeah, my latest two films are Amity, Amityville Cop. It's kind of a, a love note to uh, Maniac mm-hmm. Cop. And I play a cult leader in it, a vicious, uh, vile uh, cult leader that uh, casts a spell on the lead actor, Lovey Ray Johnson. And it is a diabolical so it's the evilest role i've ever played um and the other one is um uh, staycation the one yeah. i just now yeah i'm sure you know about that that's really getting up there um and i play a social media influencer that's dying from the virus and they put all this crappy makeup on me where i look like i'm 80 years old <laughs> no please don't put any more makeup and anyway, she's dying and she's hawking her, uh, hawking her uh, wine, Desperado wine and um, her vitamins trying to, you know, she's a genuine person trying to save the world. But, you know, she uh, she falls uh, and, you know, she dies in the end. I'm sure they don't have me dying in the movie, but I know I die in the movie. <laughs> ah! 
I, I can't wait to meet you guys. Oh, we can't wait to meet you either. It's going to be Trust so much me. fun. You have no idea. It's going to be our okay. shows. You know, we started doing these shows last year. And, uh, oh, you know, last year. Last yeah, year. La last year. We, 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 yeah, had these, yeah. we had the film festival scheduled for last year, which we had to postpone. And then one day, Tony calls me up and says, hey, the hotel wants to know if we want to do something because they want to get some work in. So right. I was like, well, what do you think? And he said, well, let's do a, just a one day show, bring a few people in and we'll go ahead and, you know, see what we got. We'll get some vendors lined up. So we uh -huh. went ahead, we went ahead, we did that show and uh, it was, it was incredible. It was absolutely incredible experience. It was very, it was only, I want to say 40% capacity of the room that we were in. It was a small show, right. but it right. was just, it, it was magical. And the next thing you know, he calls me a couple of months later. Well, we text me and him text so much during the day. It's ridiculous. But uh, he texts me, he says, Hey, let's do another one in January. Oh, I was, like, cool. I was like, all right, let's go ahead. No, same hotel. Oh, yeah. Let's go ahead and see what we can do. Let's put something together. So we put a show together. Once again, you know, we sell out our capacity it was just a beautiful experience and you oh, know, is it, it was, sold it was out great. So? yeah yeah that mm -hmm. was uh, they've all sold out so far so this one's the, coming up too uh um, we're, we're like that close i mean if, if oh, people wow. need to get and the thing about it is it will sell out once we get to uh to door tickets i can promise you it uh it, it's it's been magical what's been happening so we, the third show uh tony tony texts me one day he says hey uh, one of our agent friends says, Hey, do you have a show coming up between now and June? Cause so-and-so wants to get in on it. So Tony was like, you want to do something? I was like, Hey, let's do an outdoor show this time. That way we don't, right. have to we don't have to limit capacity. We'll find a cool place to do it. So we found a brewery that happens to be, uh, to co-owned by a good friend of ours, uh, Jay Mazer, who, oh, no. uh, she, she's one of our vendors. So we okay. got with her. What's that? It's going to be, I'm sorry. It's going to be outdoor. Well, yeah, that one was in, uh, was in March. That one was outdoor. So we got together up? and the one coming up is a hotel show. At the Marriott, I think. Yes, right? yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah, that's correct. So we do this brewery show and I kid you not, we, we do a one day show, five guests and a thousand people show up. It was were, absolutely phenomenal. Was we we couldn't believe what we were able to do. Yeah, it was a uh, so a one, we, a one day show from twelve to six. We had a thousand people. You're kidding! And we still yeah. had all the social distancing in place, and people were just really cool about it. So it worked. It was awesome. Yeah. Well, I've I've been vaccinated twice, and <laughs> I think the whole mask thing is absolute nonsense. Okay, <laughs> nonsense, pure nonsense. It's so dangerous. It was so precarious to be wearing and healing. Even my two doctors, I have two specialists right now, they said it's very, very dangerous to be inhaling the carbon dioxide from the masks. So I, I don't, I, you know, I wear masks when I go in to food for less, right? <laughs> I buy in store, right? Okay, let's, uh, let's be real. Um, anyway, um, I am so for, I'm so looking forward to seeing both of you. Oh, it's gonna be a wait. It's going to be, it's gonna be a lot of fun. So, so grateful and i cannot wait to meet you both and to see tony as well oh, yeah. so when you, you talk to tony you please tell him i love him i adore him and he knows he's a son i never had i'll definitely do that and with that we'll go ahead and sign off thank you again so much Lori. thank we you really this do was appreciate awesome. it sure. we really do appreciate God bless. God it you're bless. as sweet as i thought you would be and as, as sweet as tony told me you would be so and we'll talk yeah. soon okay all righty. Bye-bye. Take so care. Bye-bye. So handsome. Bye.